Uh, welcome. Thank you very much for having me here. Uh, I'm going to speak about uh, the home and the world. And uh, I'm raising the question, uh, cultural diplomacy at home. And at the same time, I will try to present briefly a topology of what I call the open home. Uh, you might have noticed before we spoke about a burning house, when uh, Bill Summers actually spoke about that uh, there's a sense of urgency in the world. So the house, as you immediately know, uh, notice is a very prominent uh, metaphor for larger scales. The, the subtitle of this conference is a, a world without walls. Here we take another metaphor that comes from a constructive, uh, from a, let's say the, the, build, the area of the building uh, metaphors. My, my research personally is in uh, cosmopolitanism or cosmopolitics and uh, within the scale of contemporary arts. So when we speak about supranational structures, these are very hard to sense. These are very hard to, we can only imagine them, but our essential data about cosmopolitanism, our essential data about things like globalization are hard to come by, so to say, because we don't have the sensibilities. Hence, we don't have the experiences really what these things mean, so they stay very abstract. If I speak about cosmopolitanism and the unity of the world, it is something I hardly have an experience by. So my research is concerned with finding the experiences in the small scale that can connect one to other scales as, for example, the scale of the global. Um, there's uh, other researchers in the field who do that. Uh, the current, uh, uh, or the 2002 biannual in Liverpool uh, dealt with hospitality, as I will explain later. Uh, hospitality is one of the key key experiences, so to say, that is uh, important for, for cosmopolitanism. Uh, there is contemporary art and the cosmopolitan imagination, and there is uh, cosmopolitanism and culture. Uh, so this is a little bit the context where I place my own research. And uh, I did empiric research, I quickly explained that, within the couchsurfing community. Some of the younger people probably know this. It is a worldwide uh, network of people that offer their homes to strangers for them to stay there free of costs. And it is an experience uh, that is usually understood within the context of cultural exchange. Uh, as I will point out later, there is a categorical difference between uh, cultural exchange and cultural diplomacy. Why this difference is very important, I will, I think, say as well later. But um, yeah, I don't know if, if, if anybody is, does people kind of, do, do people understand what, what couch surfing is about? All right. So um, I, I, research, I, I traveled basically all of the European countries doing uh, qualitative interviews with people who have extensive experiences with guests. So I, I, I interviewed people who have maybe hosted up to 2,000 people from all over the world in their home, free of charge. So that means there you have people that um, have encountered people from all over the world, from most nations, and so to say, have built their cosmopolitan framework from bottom up, from by their by by themselves, Couchsurfing is a is a non-profit uh, organization. Or I mean, right now the legal status is changing, but basically the idea is you don't pay for this service, and uh, um, the core the core focus is the cultural experience. Um, there has been more or less uh, research done on Couchsurfing as a as a cultural phenomena. Uh, a book published in 2013 is Couchsurfing Cosmopolitanisms as these topics. Uh, seem to collide a lot. Uh, this is a collection of essays being put out by Transcript Verlag. I can highly recommend it if you're interested in the topic. This is the book to get. Um, and now I want a little bit connect to what you said. What, now I'm asking the question, why is the home so functional in, in this cultural exchange? Why, uh, or not only why, but only how do these norms change? And I, with my working hypothesis, I say, when we have specific type of memory, we produce a specific type of imaginations that will structure our agency. Hence, if I have uh, memories of, let's say, cosmopolitan experiences, I have the capability to do cosmopolitan imaginations. Hence, I can act within the context of a cosmopolitan framework where I, let's say, pay respect or uh, my responsibility towards the whole community of the world. While I only have experiences in national context, in national museums, in these kind of things, I will most likely use that as my framework for imagination and also for my framework for agency. Um, and now, the next, the next slide. Uh, I, I'm trying to bring this a little bit now, again, back to, to, to this context of the specific 
uh, conference here. Uh, I, I'd like to make a differentiation uh, by the Routledge Handbook of Public Diplomacy, which differentiates a cultural exchange. I guess I, this is not news for you. Most of people will know this. Uh, for me, it was new because I'm not really from that field. So uh, I found it interesting that cultural exchange, as you see highlighted here, is a genuine exchange of people, cultural goods, or ideas based uh, on reciprocity and symmetrical relationship. Uh, cultural diplomacy uh, lacks that reciprocity. So cultural diplomacy is a one-way street, so to say, at least by this definition. Now, this is not neither good nor bad, but this is just the categories as they operate in the discourse as displayed by this handbook. Um, now, I, I read this quote as I actually like it. Uh, be more of a one-way street than a two-way exchange as when one nation concentrates its effort on promoting the national language, explaining its policies and point of view, or telling its story to the rest of the world. Uh, as we heard from your presentation, it doesn't have to be a nation, but it can also be other state actors. Um, now I bring this again in a context how uh, this kind of cultural diplomacy and the, the image of the home is used uh, effectively, but maybe not for good purposes. Um, this has been, uh, I don't know, in 2011, I don't know if you have seen this, but this was a Vogue article uh, that has been paid by a PR agency for $25,000, uh, where the Assad family is shown in the context of their home. So here you have a let's say, classic example of cultural diplomacy, where the image of the home, where the metaphor of a home, again, is used to, let's say, ignite the, the imagination of the readers of Vogue magazine, for example. Um, now, this, this uh, article has been largely in critique and has been withdrawn because it was not, uh, it was not labeled as a, par as a paid, um, as a paid let's say, advertising, but as a, as a genuine article that has been produced by, by the Vogue magazine. And uh, again, for me, this, this raises an interesting point of critique and raises, let's say, an interesting point of thinking when we encounter cultural diplomacy, which I think is very important. Uh, here I want to, I wanna, let's say, quote Hannah Arendt, who has this term of uh, thinking without banisters, uh, which is maybe similar to a world without walls. It's, it's when your thinking doesn't have any um, Geländer, as it would be in German. And um, I think that, that type of thinking is extremely important uh, when you encounter these kind of things. This kind of thinking without banisters, I think, is extremely important, important when you encounter cultural diplomacy because you, there is a political agenda, there is, in Carl Schmidt terms, a political enemy, and there is a friend, and it is very important to sort of sort these out. And within the end of this conference, I'm happy to, to uh, maybe, maybe inspire you um, to, to do the same, to think without banisters, to think, in a, like, to think as in a world without walls, and critically reflect uh, the cultural diplomacy that you encounter, and, and I mean, that we maybe critically reflect also in the sense of in what type of space we are actually here, in what type of space uh, we, we, we negotiate and we have a dialogue. And might, maybe you'll find some interesting results with that kind of critical engagement that sharpen your understanding of what cultural diplomacy is, what maybe cultural diplomacy is specifically within that space that we, that we share at the moment. And with that, so to say, um, aspiration that we all think without banisters, with this aspiration that we all critically engage as if we would live in a world without walls, I would like to uh, finish my presentation uh, under 10 minutes, yay. Yeah. <laughs>